Uh, my wife is working, so I do not have an assistant to read comments, but I'll do my best to see them from many feet away in my kitchen. Um, so today, we are going to go over the AeroPress and French Press brewing methods. <clears throat> They're both for uh, two uh, single or two, three cups, depending on your French press size, or five cups. They have mega-sized ones, as Katie knows from Common Desk. There's some absolute massive one there. Um, but for any of you that don't know what an AeroPress is, so an AeroPress uh, was designed a long time ago in, I think, the late 80s uh, and started getting a lot of uh, kind of coffee excitement in the last, you know, 10 years of what we've been doing uh, with specialty coffee and third wave coffee. Um, so the basis pr basic premise behind it is basically going off of what a French press is in full immersion steeping. and it's in a two things a paper filter and also a uh, pressure so it's basically like a giant syringe oh hold on let me turn my ac off sorry it's harder to hear and so there's two things that that does with pressure and a filter the one thing is that a lot of people that what they don't like about a french press is that it's very oily, um, it's very thick, uh, sometimes sludgy, um, and then uh, sometimes you get either over extraction or just you have to let it sit in there for too long to get it to taste how you want it to taste. Um, so what the AeroPress does is kind of gives you that more full-bodied extraction uh, by using pressure, by using the plunger and with the filters at the end, blocking it to create more pressure, it forces the extraction, just kind of like how espresso works, an espresso machine with pressure, um, to extract uh, more of, of a flavor, pro flavor profile, and uh, the paper filters are able to retain some of that oil that kind of coats your mouth and kind of just kind of gets a little uh, sludgy from time to time. Um, so I'll go through my techniques for this. Uh, let's see, Olivia finishing up making pour right now. Awesome. Great job, Brittany. Um, so I always go off of my standard, uh, two tablespoons per six ounces of water. Uh, this is, uh, 10 to 12 ounces of water typically for AeroPress once you do it. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do with my tablespoon scoop, do about three scoops. Um, and also there's multiple techniques to this. Uh, I'll show you the plunger. That's that. Some people like to put the bottom on first and load it from there and then do everything. That's kind of leaky. Um, if you see the more kind of consistent way of doing it is actually barely putting the plunger into the base, if you've ever seen one, and then flipping it upside down and using that. So I'm going to go ahead and add my coffee. So that's one, two, three. I'm going to do three and a half for good measure. So you kind of level it off, see how much you got in there. It's like a little less than a quarter full um, of what we got. Um, and my second technique of what I'll do to get, get ready is if you read the instructions, I'll show you the filter basket right here and the filters. Um, they're nothing special about them. They feel like pour over filters. Um, they're just cut in the circles that fit perfectly. Um, so if you're ever low on these, but you have normal coffee filters, just cut them in a circle and you're good to go. Um, oh, whoops. Um, so what I like to do, uh, the easiest way to do it is I actually use two filters. Um, that does two things obviously a little better, uh, but it also allows you to have a little more back pressure, um, which helps extract that coffee a little more. Uh, so always remember whenever you're brewing a pour over or a hand poured method, pre-wet your filters. That allows for a cleaner extraction. Cool. So I pre-wet that. Now let's get on the brewing. So always have your timer ready. I always have it on my phone. Um, and you also have a stirring method. Uh, and I'll show you, this goes with the French press too, of a little agitation. Um, but the AeroPress kit comes with pretty much everything you need, uh, including a stirring, stirring paddle. Um, so I'm gonna go of just how I showed my pour overs last time. I do a 30 second bloom, a 10 second uh, rest, um, and then a uh, full continuous pour to the top. Um, but from different from that, 
uh, at the uh, one minute mark total, I'll give, give it a slow agitation uh, stir to make sure because some of the coffee has risen from the gases uh, floating it to the top and therefore not extracting at the water in the middle or bottom. Uh, so the slight agitation allows the coffee to fully drop and immerse itself. Okay, so I set my timer and start. Just a little pour to get it all covered. All right, timer's going. It's always the best time to give it a little smell of the different aromatics that are be coming off of it. Uh, this one I'm using the, uh, what we like to call Boozy, Buhuza Wingda, uh, which is a coffee out of uh, Burundi in Africa. Super tasty coffee, super fruity. Uh, it's a little bit of a like fruit bomb right now, and we just got them in stock at Fiction, if any of y'all are close by. Very highly recommended if you like fruity coffee. Um, so at the 30 second mark, uh, five more seconds. And go ahead and pour to the top. And the coffee's gonna sit a little bit as well as it starts to absorb some of that water. So I'm gonna go right at the top. And I'll hold it because I can bring it close. But if y'all can see, without me spilling, you got that crema that looks just like um, espresso. And that's the part that people love about AeroPress is that you're not able to get an espresso per se, but you're able to get darn close. All right, so I'm at a minute, 10 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my first stir just to get things moving. Fully immersed. And you don't need to do too much, just a little bit. And with some of that water dropping, I'll fill it straight to the top again. And we're good. And what I'll do now, I'll wait for uh, three minutes of steeping. Uh, I have a kind of dialed in, and time is the variable, as you all know, uh, that is most dependent on the coffee and the grind size, uh, depending on which method you're using. Uh, so this one I'm using like a medium uh, fine to coarse grind for my AeroPress. Um, extraction rate uh, is uh, not as fast as a pour over, um, but not as slow as a French press as well. So we're working on that, working on two minutes. Let's see, so pumped since you're doing a pour press. <laughs> it's Isaiah, oh, Isaiah is here, nice. Bum, bum, bum. And I had fun at a AeroPress competition a few years ago that was held in Denton. Um, and that's actually where in, I won my espresso machine in one of their raffles. Um, but the AeroPress competition was really interesting because you see so many people using, you have to use the same method, use the same kettle, but everyone had like really crazy things. Like some people like had their coffee and like they agitated it by shaking it. And some people liked flipping it upside down. I was like, all right, y'all are just out there um, doing stuff. I was like, just keep it simple. Um, cool. And we're at two minutes and 50 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and put my pressure screen on top. Make sure it's tight. Turn it. Okay. Start the three minute mark. I'm going to go ahead and press. So what you do now is the delicate part. Flip straight over. And then how I like to do it, I hope all of you can see me, is for consistent pressure, which is what you want with extraction is to just kind of lay my body on top of it to allow the pressure to be almost equal. And you press it to the bottom and we're done. And the coffee's super easy. So you just to clean it, just take the mesh off, set it down and then like a syringe, push it out. And if you've ever worked on an espresso machine or anything, you'll see you get a puck very similar to an espresso puck. So it stays almost intact uh, from being pressed. Cool. So, and here you have your full mug of coffee. Pour it out. Let's see what we taste like. And also, I'm only doing it in a glass so everyone can see. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to that. You can do it directly into your mug, which is what I recommend usually. All right, cleaned up the mess. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, it's good. Fruit notes are coming through great. 
low bitterness, very clean mouthfeel from the filters of the AeroPress, and good full-bodied extraction uh, from the pressure there. Very happy with how that turned out. I actually haven't done an AeroPress in a long time, so I started playing around with it today. I was like, oh man, I missed this. Um, and if you saw my messages in the coffee chat, I think last week or a few days ago when Brent was asking about uh, uh, auto brewer. So my wife, who was then girlfriend, didn't have any coffee option and we didn't have that much money at the time. And so my gift to her was an AeroPress. So this is actually her AeroPress. Um, and we used it on the daily. Uh, and it was just not fun making multiple of these a day when we were hanging out on the weekend and just wanting more than one cup of coffee. <laughs> uh, so Brent, I hope the uh, auto brewer has been working out for uh, your wife uh, pretty well. Um, all right, now on to the French press, which I think uh, the majority of people have uh, as either a main brewing method or a backup brewing method. Um, I have one of the probably the most common French press systems here, uh, which is I think the uh, two to three cup Bodum French press. Uh, they sell them at most normal stores, Walmart, Target. Um, it's glass, they're cheap. I think they're like 20 bucks or something now. Um, super simple. You don't need filters. You don't need anything. All you need is coffee and hot water um, and you're ready to rock. Um, so always make sure it's clean. Uh, the plunger, uh, good to go. It's intact. Sometimes they come with screws. Um, just make sure the screw's tight because I've had it before to where using one, you plunger it and then when you pull up, the plunger and everything just gets jammed in there and then you're not happy. <laughs> um, but cool. So sticking with my two tablespoons rule, um, what I always like to say, if you go kind of uh, a quarter to one thirds full, you're usually close to there. Um, so I'm gonna do one, two, three, four full scoops and I just filter it everywhere. Let's see, five for good measure because I usually do this one by eyesight. Oh wait, no, six, I'm a dummy. Because I did math on it earlier y'all, don't worry. So six tablespoons, what I have calculated out, if you're able to see, a little less. We got the water going. And again, uh, so I like to always do the bloom method for most of my coffees. Um, it just allows that better uh, extraction for the coffee to kind of uh, off gas and aerate itself before you're fully immersing it. Um, it's kind of like that, the, the pre-wetting, the, the assistance it needs to fully awaken, if you will. Um, so, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and start my timer. Nice little circular motion. Getting all that coffee wet, and then I'll stop. And then we'll wait for that, that 30 seconds. And the cool thing about the glass bottoms as well is that you can see how it's extracting uh, when you're pouring water into it. So you can see if there's a dry spot, you can see if uh, you know a part is kind of looking really weird or a chunk, uh, a clump forms. Um, and so that's the importance of where agitation uh, is usually recommended. It's not necessary, but it's recommended just for a more equal extraction. Okay, we're coming on the 40 second mark. All right, here we go. And little circles just to get that full immersion in there, get everything wet. And I'm gonna pour it to the bottom of the silver line. Uh, typically, if it's not a glass one or other one, they have marks on the rim. Um, so we are coming up on one minute right now. So in 30 more seconds, just like the AeroPress, at a minute and 30 seconds, I'm gonna do my first agitation. <clears throat> See if there's any questions. Question, we have reverse osmosis, would it be better coffee added minerals in third light? Ooh, Brent, I could easily answer that one in just a second. <clears throat> I enjoy uh, water science as well. <clears throat> All right, so I got my stir stick coming up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, here we go. So a minute, 30 seconds. You can use a spoon, you can use anything. Just give it a nice little swizzle and full immersion. You're gonna get that crema, just like in the AeroPress, just in like pour over, most pour over methods. So, uh, and again, if you weren't here a second ago, what the agitation does is it not only helps with extraction, it can also over extract if you do it too much, um, but it also allows the coffee that has been separated and raised from the off gassing of the hot water um, and not been fully extracted. So it helps bring everything back together. 
So uh, as, as I've heard and, and uh, been told many things over the years of how people like to do their French press, uh, the end result mostly comes down to preference and what you're brewing, uh, what coffee you're brewing, I mean. Um, so some people, uh, like Katie, like four to five minutes. I typically like three to three and a half minutes. Um, and that is because um, I, I go with a slightly finer, uh, the medium fine coarse grind, uh, just because I'm, I'm a little more tedious with it and, and kind of can see and visualize the differences um, of how and when you over extract and under extract. Um, but a safer bet is always to do the coarser route um, and taste test it, uh, but typically it'll be around the four to five mark. Uh, my preference is short and sweet. Uh, the safer bet is the long game, kind of like smoking and barbecuing, you know, slow and low, baby. Uh, for any of you people who have smokers out there, I don't know how many. Shout out, though. Um, cool. Coming up on 20 more seconds. I'm going to do one last stir at the 20 second mark, just short and sweet, getting it back in there. And the filter, bring it up to the top, put it over the mouth. Usually they have mouth holes. And then just slowly press down. And you typically want to do it slower than faster because if you kind of push down quickly, a lot of those coffee grounds can sneak around uh, the press and you don't want that. And I always suggest pour uh, make only what you're going to be drinking for that time period, because as even though you press this, this is the one downside that that is a bummer about French press. Even though you press the crowns down, if you have hot water and any water sitting in there still, um, it's going to keep extracting. It's not going to be as extracting as much as it was before, but it's going to keep extracting. So if you come back to your coffee, like drink that one in like 10, 15 minutes and you come back and pour more, it's not gonna taste the same and or it could get really bitter or astringent. Uh, but if uh, you're using a darker roasted coffee or something like that, typically uh, it extracts a lot of the kind of darker, heavier notes. So if you're that person that kind of likes that heavier kind of coffee, then hey, that's cool. Um, there's no problems with that. It's all up to preference. That's the one thing I love talking with uh, people about coffee and other beverages is that, um, you know, it's not a thing where you do this, do this, and it's gonna taste perfect. No, it's gonna be, do, do, here are the basics, here's what you can learn, and do it to how you like it tasting. And if there's something that you're doing and you're just doing it consistently, consistently that you're not liking the product that you have, then those are the times that we're like, oh, okay, maybe try this, maybe try this. Uh, but in the end, it, it's always gonna come down to preference because all of our palates are different, um, just like wine, just like beer, um, you know, not everyone loves a Pinot Noir. Not everyone loves a double IPA. Um, things come down to difference. So everyone, well, the biggest thing I like to teach is that coffee is vast in the market. Um, it is very, very different uh, for many different reasons, means, whether it's elevation, soil type, or uh, quality of coffee. Um, but there's a lot to it, and that's where the fun stuff comes in. Um, so let's taste the coffee, and I'll read questions. Wow, it's really good. So the difference that I have, uh, so I use the same coffee for my AeroPress and French press. So my AeroPress, uh, very fruity, very flavorful, and very clean, crisp, um, not too muddy on my mouth. And I don't say muddy as a bad thing. It's kind of just like an easy way to describe texture. Um, French press, uh, still I have more darker notes out of this. So the darker notes, notes are going to be more chocolate uh, that come in the background for that full immersion. Um, but not, not as fruity, not as um, kind of uh, popping out there. It's kind of more straightforward, um, kind of one level of taste um, and kind of goes there. Um, and the mouthfeel, it's kind of coating my mouth a little more just from all the oils and different stuff that are going through there. Um, so my personal preference is I love the AeroPress. Downside of the AeroPress is it makes one little cup. Uh, benefit of French press, super easy. Uh, it's not too hard to mess up. I mean, it's, it's hard to mess it up really. Um, and you can get multiple cups out of it for multiple people. Um, so those are the two things there. Both are great full immersion brewing methods um, and things like that. Um, highly recommend it. Um, so let me go to questions. Um, let's see, how long does French press need to sit before you press it down? Oh, uh, 
I do uh, three and a half minutes for mine. I do a little, excuse me, finer grind. Uh, but the average is usually four and a half minutes, uh, four to five, uh, depending on what coffee and what grind size you're using. So if you go with a coarser ground coffee for your French press, it's usually around the four and a, four and a half minute mark. Um, and then the other, um, if you do finer. Um, and all right, so Brent, let me go to yours. Uh, we have reverse osmosis at home. Would we get better coffee if we added minerals like third wave? Um, yes. So actually with your res reverse osmosis, it depends on how, what your stage filter process is. Um, I can get really into it and I don't want, I, I'm not going to message me. Um, no, but yes, if you use third wave to add a little more mineral content, it will, uh, bring back to life. So it's adding mineral content along with a little bit of uh, sodium content. Um, and it's kind of giving like that perfect water. Um, I don't always say, uh, like the third wave water tablets, they're not cost effective. Um, but, um, it does make it taste better. Um, I'm curious to see if you can see if you, you're able to taste a comparison as well. Um, I think Dawson, Dawson, who works in our company, I, I've tried them personally. Uh, I can tell a little bit of a difference, but to me, it wasn't worth the price point um, to keep using those every time I'm brewing coffee. Um, so it's just one of those things. Um, I also love that you have reverse osmosis. Super great. Um, let's see. Another question. Fiction grind in my coffee. Oh, good job, McKenzie. Represent. <laughs> Um, when stirring, do you stir or just water? Uh, do you stir coffee or just water? Oh, so stirring, uh, so the goal of stirring is to agitate the coffee. Uh, so mostly if you see my paddle, so you can use like a big spoon or the back of like a wood spoon, like if you have a thick one, but the goal is to mostly just move, like not to stir it, stir it, but mostly just to move it around so the water can re-encapsulate uh, the coffee ground itself to make it fall. Let's see. Am I missing any questions? Nice. Have a little wood coffee spoon. Yeah, a lot of people do. They come in a lot of uh, Amazon coffee kits I found, um, which is super helpful. Um, Isaiah, I'm super curious. Do you have any questions or things that you do differently on your AeroPress? You can unmute yourself if you will, if you want as well. Oh no, um, I think just about everything you're doing is pretty much what I do. Um, I actually nice. just got um, the AeroPress Go. Um, oh, it's a, yeah, it's a smaller version of of the the one you have. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess I'm curious. So, how do you make? How would you make a, a espresso shot with the AeroPress? So that. That is one thing, I'm gonna grab my chair real quick. Um, so that is one thing that people um, like to say that you can do with an AeroPress. Um, there's a couple ways that you can get close, but I can't for sure say that you actually do, um, like, like that you're able to achieve it. Because for an espresso shot, you need about nine bars of pressure, which an AeroPress just physically cannot create that much back pressure. Um, but a couple of things you could do is they do sell, I think Prismo is one of the brands is another one, uh, that instead of the mesh head and the paper filter, it's a pre built in, uh, filter system that creates a consistent back pressure, uh, and is harder to press and you don't need a paper filter with that. Um, so it gives you a little more back pressure. Um, and the other thing as well is just like espresso is you need a really fine grind. Uh, I would not say use finely ground espresso for your AeroPress because it's going to be way over extracted uh, with what you're trying to do uh, because you'd have to do it like short and sweet. So like you wouldn't do it a full three minutes or so. Uh, it would probably be like a minute and a half total, like quick thing and just like trying to press the extraction being the only way of getting it out. Um, so I like to say that uh, it is possible to get close, but it's not it's not the easiest. It's like one of those things you really have to trial and error at home on yourself um, to get it right, you know? Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. What else, what's another, what's another uh, coffee question that we have out there right now? Or uh, what's uh, something you guys have found 
as you've been brewing a lot of coffee at home and or tea now. I'll sit here, drink out of my cat mug forever. Let's see. What is it? Oh yeah, it says it's mine. Enjoy. Uh, can you repeat the question? Mackenzie, the question is, does anyone have a question about coffee brewing? <laughs> or uh, has there been anything in the last couple of weeks that we've all been stuck at home or wherever uh, about uh, brewing methods or something you found about coffee or a new coffee that you like um, that you got at your local coffee shop? I do have a question. Yes. As far as like making something I've been using a lot at home is the more specialty latte stuff. Oh yes. I've been seeing a lot of people do that. So do you have any, like, if all we have is a, a French press or we have an espresso, but we're about to run out of pods and probably won't buy anymore for a while. So if, like, all we have is a French press, what's, like, a good, fun way to pretend like you're getting a latte from your favorite coffee shop? Absolutely. Um, so one thing you could do, uh, the, the best thing is, uh, I think I could do another class um, or I could just kind of post some recipes. Uh, it's super easy. Or you could look them online. They're super easy of just making some syrups at home. Uh, you can make them out of extracts or other things you have lying around. Um, so making your own flavors and or syrups, super easy way to get more flavor into your coffee of different things. Uh, all right, Amanda, I see you. Latte and syrup class. Um, so that's number one. Number two, uh, you could do like the fun things of... Uh, doing a French press, um, doing it kind of clean and then, uh, leave it out and put it in the fridge to cool down. You could do like an ice latte, put some ice in there. And if you have a cocktail shaker, uh, we used to do them at fiction and stuff like that to where it put some ice in it in a cocktail shaker, um, put some, uh, honey and cinnamon in there, uh, or allspice if you have it super great, uh, super versatile you use as well. Cocktail shaker, shake it up a little bit. Uh, you're going to get a little bit of, and a little bit of cream or milk in there if you want, or alternative milk up to you. Shake it up quite a bit, and you're going to get a little bit of head and the foam on top uh, and have a nice little like ice latte beverage, uh, which will be kind of close. Uh, my other recommendation for that as well to get a little more of a taste out of it, because you can only use, like, if you put a lot of stuff in a French press, it'll water it down quite a bit. Um, but the other option is using cold brew um, as, as the other option for adding syrups, milk, and shaking it. Um, we have some coming up at Fiction that we're working on for our bottles, actually. Um, we're going to be doing a take-home pick, pick four, pick six option between cold brews, and we're bringing back our infusions and other stuff like that here in the next uh, week. Um, so it's super exciting. Um, we have little bottles that we bought um, to bottle everything, so we'll keep in the fridge for everyone. Little, little sealing containers. Oh, hey, Gentry. Um, cool. Let's see. I'm afraid to ask. Let's see. Brent, I'm afraid to ask everyone if but I'm not a huge fan of the Colossi I bought. It's a bit fruity for me, like something a little bolder. Do they have another blend? Ah, yes, Brent. Uh, and no, you're, you're not, don't think less of yourself, uh, or down on counterculture. Uh, so the one thing about counterculture is I'm not sure at the shop that you went to how broad their menu is for what coffees they have in stock. Um, but the counterculture catalog, if that's where you're looking to go, uh, has about usually 15 to 20 coffees at a time. Uh, so if you order directly from counterculture or something else that's in stock at the shop, uh, they have bolder ones. My recommendation for bolder flavors, uh, are going to be the hologram blend, which is my personal favorite blend that they have. Uh, it's going to have the, uh, kind of heavy body chocolate notes from the Latin America coffees and the, uh, Ethiopia blend. Uh, mix in there that's going to bring in slight fruitness. I like to call it like the intro coffee that kind of gets people out of like that traditional like thick and heavy coffee taste and into this other one. The other high recommendation from Counterculture, just because I know this the most, I could talk about other local coffee roasters and or origins as well, um, is that uh, Big Trouble. Uh, we have those both uh, actually in five pound bags that we're selling for really cheap right now um, and or uh, stuff like that. Um, I know you're not close, but if you are, uh, if you'd want to make the trek to fiction, because I think you're in Frisco, right? Um, 
if you want to make the trek to fiction one of the days, um, just shoot me a message and I'll get you a bag of Big Trouble or Hologram because I have we have quite a bit in stock and I'll let you try it out. Um, and so you can have a little versatile uh, option there. Um, so yeah, there are multiple options of coffees and I think we, we just got another one in. I can't remember. Not, it might be a Kigoma, um, but a little more bold flavor. The Colossi is not too bold of a flavor. Um, so you're not crazy by, uh, by thinking that you don't like it as much. Uh, there's a lot of coffees out there uh, and do stuff like that. Um, so yeah, just let me know. Uh, let's see. Uh, I also sometimes blend coffee with coconut oil, cinnamon, and dates. Absolutely, Amanda, that is a very popular method of uh, doing some different coffees. Um, coconut oil and or ghee. Ghee is very popular in the uh, ghee world. I don't know who I don't know who drinks ghee anymore or uses ghee. Um, the ghee world. Um, very popular. And the uh, the other fun one that I always like to talk about is um, uh, was it bulletproof coffee? Uh, I would like to first say it is a gimmick of that it is able to give you a cleaner cup of coffee and or uh what what, what is it they, they had in that it, it helps your body obtain the better nutrients from coffee no that's just terrible annoying marketing uh so but good times uh also going back to a question uh what's a really easy way to make cold brew without having a cold brew system per se you might have touched on this the other week uh Brittany, i did uh so uh google it it is very easy uh, I recommend large mason jars and a uh, cheesecloth. Um, that's usually one of the easier methods. And if you don't have cheesecloth, I have used uh, clean t a clean white t-shirt that I don't plan on ever using again as a filter instead. And you kind of just squeeze it out and put it in another container and put it in the fridge and you're good to go. Um, so there's plenty of good methods there. Let's see, Jeremy, what was your question? I got to find that one. Jeremy, so French presses, are you able to brew any grind of coffee? You mentioned finer grind and coarse. I normally use coarse. Uh, so for uh, French press, what I personally use, um, just because I do a shorter brew cycle, about three and a half minutes, uh, I use a, a medium to coarse grind, not very coarse, uh, but the easiest way of doing it is doing a coarse grind uh, because it allows you to do a longer extraction and it's less uh, kind of volatile of over extracting. Uh, because it's going to take more time to extract all the proper things. Uh, so for what I do with the medium medium coarse grind, uh, it is uh, three and a half minutes, and typically for the normal coarser grind, it's going to be four and a half to five minutes for extraction. Let's see, go back down to the new ones. Uh, yes, that's where I got the inspo. It tastes good. I don't know the benefits. Hey, you're good, Amanda. Um, have to get some work done. Awesome. Thank you, Brent. Thanks for coming, guys. Um, awesome. So I'll give another minute for a question or two from anyone else in the house. Uh, oh, Lindsay, what was your question? Sorry, I, where? I'm not good at this. How many cups does your French press hold? Oh, mine is uh, two to three cups. Okay, cool. So I got the little guy. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. So the math for what you can do is I, I have it written down. Yeah. So always think two tablespoons per six ounces of water. Um, that's the easiest way to kind of gauge it. And once you do your first one, you're like, ooh, that's way too much. You can do less coffee. Sorry guys, Gidge wanted to say hello. Um but um uh, she is awoken. Hi baby. Um yes. Let's see, I used to do Bulletproof coffee all the time. Yes, I'll, Bulletproof had its heyday, man. Um, awesome, cool. Any other questions, anybody? Mackenzie, do you want me to repeat the question? <laughs> no, you're good, I got them all now. Oh, we should do a dog happy hour, that'd be cute. It'd be the one thing where none of the dogs would care and then all the humans would just be drinking. To normal. Um, cool. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, all of you feel free to private message me if you need to any specific coffee questions or at me on the coffee channel. Um, and I'll be able to get to that. Um, but many things are to come. So 
Uh, also comment uh, if you guys want like a syrup class or if you guys want another kind of class or anything like that, kind of most popular will work out. And probably the next one as well, tea. I could do a matcha class um, and stuff like that. Uh, so comment in the coffee channel. Let me know what you guys are feeling for next time and we could do that. Um, so, okay, ma it sounds like matcha. A lot of y'all want that matcha game going. Uh, cool. All right, guys. Y'all have a good day. Thanks for joining.